Hello, this is Kirk Cardella, Adobe in Action's Director of Education, and this is our 2014 brick making process. We start off by running some local soil through a half inch screen. That's what I'm doing right here. It's good to break the uh, soil down uh, a little bit smaller for Adobe brick making and mortar. Here's a close up of the uh, soil again. It's uh, local soil from the Santa Fe River Basin and we're purchasing it um, from a local gravel yard and running it through the screen to get it ready. This is an example of one of our mixing stations. We're using these uh, feed uh, troughs and they're on a stand so everything's at uh, waist height which makes it very comfortable. And we're using these uh, three gallon um, hard rubber buckets instead of shovels. We use shovels to fill them up with our materials, but uh, we can get a more accurate mix if we use buckets because everyone's shovel is a different size. And here's a shot of the mixing station again. We're using garden hose uh, to actually mix the mix inside the station. And we have these rain barrels where we store water. We're trying to conserve water. And so this way we don't waste water. This is These are the rain barrels that we're using. So we're getting ready to do a mix now. This is Mike Lopatch, our executive director. We start by adding uh, water uh, to the mixing station. We're going to add um, four of these buckets, and there are three gallons. We have 12 gallons of water uh, total. We're just going to add them. We like to add the water first because it makes it easier to mix then. If we put the dry material in first and then the water, um, it's harder to mix, and we tend to have the dry mix uh, sticking to the bottom of the station. So here's our last uh, bucket. Uh, so we have 12 gallons of water in the station. We're using straw. We like to add straw to our adobes. This straw has gone through a, a leaf mulcher, one, uh, one pass through the leaf mulcher. And now we're going to use those same buckets. We're using the same bucket for all of our measurements. And we're going to add uh, two buckets. Notice how we're not really compacting it. We're just going to fill the bucket loosely uh, with the straw to the top, and then we'll add that uh, to our mix. So, so far we have 12 gallons of water, and that is uh, three gallons. Now we have six gallons of uh, chopped straw. And it's always good then to um, get the straw a little bit wet in the mix, so we're using the garden hoe here just to get the uh, straw uh, distributed in the mix, otherwise it tends to clump up uh, a little bit. Notice how comfortable it is to work at this height. This is one of the reasons why we chose this system because we're working with a lot of volunteers and we want to keep things up off the ground. Now Mike's uh, adding our screened soil. So this is our clay rich soil. Of course we need clay and this soil has a pretty decent clay content. And Mike's going to fill up a bucket. We'll show you how we do this. So we fill it all the way to the top and then we just strike it with our hand uh, like so. And then that gets put into the mix. and. Um, for our uh, for this size mix, we're doing seven buckets of the soil, the clay-rich soil, I'm calling it. Now, this is uh, one of the things we like to point out is it's good to have uh, one person, at least one person, uh, mixing while the mix is going in. Otherwise, um, it tends to clump up at the bottom. So here we have now all seven of our clay-rich soil buckets in the mix, and Mike and I are just um, agitating the mix, uh, hydrating the clay, making sure the clay, uh, the clay is our glue, so we want to make sure that it's nicely distributed in the water. And then the second uh, ingredient is the sand. We're using washed concrete sand. It's very coarse. There are little rocks, all the way from little rocks down to small uh, grain sizes. That's very important for making a strong earthen building materials. And here also we're going to add seven buckets of the mix. So it's a 50-50 mix, 50% 50 of our clay-rich soil and 50% of our uh, washed concrete sand, a coarse sand. Of course, your soil mix might be different. So Mike's adding, especially with the sand, it's very important that you have at least one person mixing while you're adding the sand because the sand tends to clump up at the bottom of the mix. And here we are now. We have all of our sand added. So we have uh, four buckets of water, two buckets of straw, seven buckets of clay-rich soil, local soil, and now seven buckets of uh, washed concrete sand, coarse sand. And it gets a little bit difficult to mix, but it's, 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 it is considered a wet mix. And I'm just showing you here with the action cam, this movement of two people working at a station and getting the mix, getting the sand evenly distributed, getting everything evenly distributed. That's what we want. 
it's quite easy because we are doing a wet mix and we'll talk more about that later. And then the last step is just to go in with your hands real quick, check the edges, make sure there are no clumps. Um, it's easy to miss clumps along the edges. Here's one that Mike found and we're just going to break it up with his hand now. That's sort of the last step in the mixing process and this mix is now ready to go um, out into the field into our forms. Here are our forms. We've made 50 forms. There are six bricks each, so we have a total of 300 bricks that we can lay down at one time. They're made with two by fours and they're screwed together. Brick size, of course, in New Mexico is 10 by 14 by three and a half. So we lay these uh, brick forms out on the ground, uh, like so, two together. And a lot of times people wet them. We don't wet them. We're using such a wet mix that it's not really necessary. This is our screed tool. Um, it's just a, a piece of fence on a welded onto a onto a, uh, a handle. And now we're transferring now the mud mix. This is how we're doing it with our volunteers as well. We're keeping it all very low tech. We're transferring the mud mix using those same three gallon buckets to the wheelbarrow. And we want to go with about a half a wheelbarrow load. If we go any more, it's too heavy for our volunteers, and we risk tipping them over. And then the wheelbarrows go out into the field like so. The forms are waiting. And then we'll simply start on one end, one four brick uh, side of the form, and we'll dump the mix out into the form. Normally we have a team of people doing this. And then there's a little bit of hand work just to get, sometimes we spill a little bit on the sides. Notice how wet the mix is. There are two ways of making adobes. One way is to do a very stiff mix and then pour the mix into the form and pull the form right away. This is the wet method where um, it would not be possible to pull a form right away. We have to let it sit for a few hours, or in, in our case, we let it sit overnight. And now Mike is going to take our screed and simply distribute the mud mix over these um, four sections of the brick form. Usually that's about what a wheelbarrow will fill, about four sections. And then without fussing too much, we're just going to strike the top uh, of the mud uh, one or two times and just create more uniform uh, bricks by getting the surface level. We'll do that on both sides. And again, normally we have a team of people uh, working here, one or two people working on the form, and it maybe goes a little bit quicker. And that's pretty much it for this section. We're just going to keep repeating this process, bringing wheelbarrow after wheelbarrow in and dumping it on top of the forms. Usually with our volunteers, we have you know two or three teams of, of people working on um, sets of forms so we can lay out 36 bricks at one time. And Mike's going ahead and distributing the mud again with the screed. You could do this by hand as well, or you could use little hand squeegees, but we found out that this um, larger screed uh, works really well. And again, once we get it distributed, we do a, a simple pass over the top, striking the top to give ourselves more uniform bricks. So now we've got our form entirely full. This is a little extra step that we like to do, especially in New Mexico in the summertime. It's quite warm, and sometimes that sun or the wind will dry the bricks too quickly, and they tend to crack a little bit. So we want to keep our clay content relatively high. Uh, that makes the bricks a little bit more water resistant. And so uh, for that reason, we add just a little bit of water over the top on very warm days or very windy days. And then Mike is actually going in with his hands here and just um, working the water into the surface a little bit. We do not really want to smooth out the surfaces. We want rough surfaces. That actually makes it easier when we start building adobe walls with these bricks. Rough surfaces grab the mortar better. And Mike is just finishing up here, uh, doing some final uh, cleanup work and making sure that things are nice, nicely distributed. So we have our 12 bricks laid down here. And we just repeat this process uh, throughout the day. And like I said before, we can lay out about 300 bricks. Now, this is, uh, these are some bricks that we made the day before. So um, we're just showing you how we pull the forms off uh, the next day. You can see that the bricks are still um, uh, wet on the sides there, but the tops are dry. So it's quite easy with two people. This size form, you want to have two people. Simply grab it on the ends, and it pops right off. 
And again, these bricks were not, these forms were not uh, pre-wet, and because the mix is so wet, it's relatively easy to pull the forms off. And the next step is to carefully stand the bricks up on end. So usually we can do this the next day, depending on the weather within one day or two days maximum, we can stand the bricks up. And we want to get them up like this as soon as possible uh, because this will help them to dry out. And Mike's using this little hand hoe just to scrape. If we do this scraping stage right now, you could use a trowel, uh, you could use a piece of uh, metal. Uh, Mike's using this little garden hoe. Um, just quickly uh, scrape the bottom and we'll have more uniform bricks. And then once we have them uh, dry in the field for about a week, we, we like to put them on pallets like so. We can put 30, 10, three rows of 10, that's 30 bricks. And then we can go the opposite way. So we're getting 60 bricks on a pallet and then normally we put five more flat on the top. Notice how we leave a little bit of space between them, and then we go ahead and wrap these with shrink wrap, and they're ready to be picked up uh, by a little forklift and put on a flatbed truck and delivered to one of our uh, recipients, which are normally uh, nonprofit organizations. Thank you, and take care.